Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Um, I am so excited for this panel. Um, this is absolutely going to build on a lot of what we've been talking about all day, um, really understanding uh, the ecosystem, what's happening today, how things are changing. Um, we uh, have a really special panel about that ecosystem today. Um, any of you who uh, filled out the survey that went out ahead of the conference about, about your experiences with recruitment automation technology, um, those results are going to be shared in this conference or in this talk. So be excited about that. Um, uh, without further ado, I'm going to introduce the esteemed George Laroc, uh, the founder of HR Wins, uh, and I will let him take things away from here. Thanks, George. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I don't have, what, what should I say? Thank you, the fabulous Dave Mikkelberg from uh, Wade and Wendy. Um, yeah, I'm excited to be here because I get to be here today with uh, my two friends and two partners. And I'll let you go ahead and introduce yourselves. We're the HR Federation. Uh, we work together. And uh, go ahead and let everybody know, if they don't know you, if they've been under a rock, who, who you are. Madeline, you go first. Oh, thanks, Trish. Hi, everyone. My name is Madeline Lerano. I am the founder of a company called Aptitude Research, and we do research on talent acquisition, HR technology, employee experience technology. I've been an analyst for, for many, many years and, and have worked with George and Trish for many years as well. So I'm really excited to be here and to, to talk with all of you. Thank you. And hi, everyone. I'm Trish McFarlane. I am the co-founder of H3 HR Advisors which actually grew out of the HR Happy Hour podcast and network, which George and Madeline are both part of. Um, and we have worked together for, for many years, um, spent a good chunk of my career as a practitioner. I've also worked on the product side and as an analyst now for about five years. So we're really excited to be here today and to uh, share some information and then to hear your thoughts about it. Cool. Well, as way of uh, further introduction and share my screen. Do, do you see the, uh, is that up? I, I can't see you anymore. So, okay. Um, now let's, uh, let's see what happens here. Okay. So I mentioned we're part of the HR Federation um, and we'll come back to this because we've got a, we have this file. We're going to walk through uh, the, this report on the um, uh, recruiting automation uh, tech landscape, and we have it for you to download. It's at HR Tech Book, which is a directory of uh, the global HR tech uh, space. It's free, uh, no ads. And then we also collaborate via HR Federation on Activate HCM. And we'll get into that a little later and uh, a conversation we have coming up around conversational AI and recruiting very appropriately. Um, so let's, let's talk about uh, what's in this report. Um, Madeline, do you want to kick it off? Sure. So we're going to um, talk a little bit about automation as it goes through the entire talent acquisition lifecycle. I think what, what we've seen and what we've experienced is automation for recruitment anyways, talked about just in certain use cases. And we're going to really look, look and talk about it very broadly. So we're going to share information on that. I know we did a little, a little poll, um, pulse survey, if you will. Mm -hmm. For those of you who participated, thank you so much for that. And we're going to share those results as well. Yeah. And I, and I think um, while, you know, that's sort of an agenda that, that we're looking at, it is really important that, um, you know, we're not just here to talk about uh, chatbots and uh, conversational interfaces on your uh, career site or job site. We're here to talk about the whole, uh, the whole process. And I, I know when we step back and we look at it, uh, there are so many opportunities for automation, and that's really what we want to we want to dig in on. Um, we, the three of us, work together all the time. I'd, I'd love to tell you all that we spent a ton of time we took we spent a ton of time preparing this, um, but we uh, you know we do this all the time. So we're going to let you listen into our conversation about recruitment automation uh, as we as as we have it. Um, so who wants to take recruitment marketing on the uh, as the the first bit? Well, I can get started if you'd like. Okay. Um, so as, as we put this together, one of the things that, that Madeline um, mentioned is that we like to look at the entire you know, life cycle as opposed to a certain use case. And in terms of breaking that down, it, we're hoping that this will provide some more context around ways that you can actually use automation to bolster what you're doing. Because you know, ultimately, we're trying to make a relationship with someone 
before they're ready to even maybe be a candidate, right? They might not even be a, a prospect just yet. So um, with recruitment marketing, it's really that ability to sort of focus on um, helping a candidate or even a potential candidate have a really solid understanding of what your employer, you as the employer, are all about, right? It's building a relationship, hopefully, long before you ever need that relationship. And it gives that good foundation. Um, Madeline, I know you've done some research specifically on recruitment marketing as we were um, you know, preparing for this, we were talking through that. Do you want to maybe share some of the results that you were seeing from that? Yeah, absolutely. So I think, um, you know, it's it's so important today. There's obviously been a huge investment in recruitment marketing for organizations. And the interesting thing is that there's a lot of different solutions to think about in this area. You know, certainly the recruitment marketing platforms and CRM support organizations here. Um, there's a lot of conversational AI that can support companies as well. Um, but to me, it, it comes down to really three things. It comes down to the content. How do we make sure that we're using automation to be able to deliver content to candidates, to the right candidates um, at the right time? And automation can help with that. It, it can make sure that we're delivering that content um, through the, the right channels and, and doing that to the right people. Um, the next piece is communication. And this is so important, you know, for so many years, re recruitment was just waiting for somebody to apply for a job, and then we would start to engage with them. And even if it wasn't great engagement, it would start to happen after somebody applied. Recruitment marketing, it shifts that. It, it lets us engage and communicate with them even before they're applying, even if they never apply. And there's huge benefits to that. And automation plays a huge role, whether that's through conversational AI, whether that's communicating through landing pages or career sites, whether through your employer branding efforts. So making sure that, that we are um, constantly engaging with talent, nurturing that talent and doing that through technology. Um, and then the, the next piece that is so important for recruitment marketing is thinking about the, the data and the analytics with that. So it's really thinking about how do we understand through automation what we're doing, where we're spending money, how we're advertising, and start to make better decisions. And to me, that's that's really the value of, of automation in this recruitment marketing. It's it's in the content, it's in the communication, and then it's in the analytics and, and allowing us to be better and continue to be better. Yeah, I think I think um, the only thing I would add here is that there's a there's a, a long uh, held analogy between business to business and business to consumer marketing and recruitment marketing. And uh, I, I think it's, it's only an analogy in the sense that you're delivering a message and you're engaging in this, in this sense, a candidate versus a customer or a prospect. Um, but th where the, um, it, it falls apart in the, in the, in the workflow in the sense that uh, it's not one transaction, it's more of a, of a lifelong relationship. Uh, or a career-long relationship, if you will. Um, what I would say, though, is there, there are incredible opportunities that exist, and I would steal a page from B2B and B2C marketing, where a lot of times we get we overcomplicate this and we think about um, whether it's artificial intelligence or whether it's um, the, you know, the bots that, that are working on the front end. The B2B and B2C marketing world is filled with conversations about triggers and actions. So by certain behavior on your website, on your career page, with your content, with a specific piece of content can then trigger an action, whether it's in your ATS, your CRN, your recruitment marketing platform, or a handoff to a conversational bit of AI, depending on, on the status. So um, I think you know, you're probably in, in one of a few contexts right now. You, you may be um, you may be in a place where you have an essential uh, worker workforce and you're drowning in, um, in trying to keep up and making hires. You can look at your existing platforms for these types of automations. Um, or maybe you're in a place where, uh, you know, you're well funded, but you have the opportunity to think about the future. You might be thinking about what platforms are better to support those types of marketing Automation. So I, I think there's a there's a ton of value, and it's in all of the commercial systems today that um, that you'll find at HR TechBook or um, uh, as we as we get through this. Um, so let's let's keep moving. Branding. Um, George, before we did, I just wanted to make one other comment too. Sure. I know we're not covering sort of you know once once maybe someone leaves your organization, but to me, recruitment marketing is also it's sort of the thing that wraps around the whole experience with 
with anyone that you're coming into contact with. Because, you know, when I think of employers that, that really do a good job of this, um, uh, some of which I've worked with before, for example, who still, even though you're no longer an employee, they're using that recruitment marketing platform to keep you apprised of what's going on. They're providing resources to you to keep you engaged with them many years after you might leave. But what that does is that makes me as the former employee on that, you know, recruitment marketing system, getting information then out to other potential candidates for them. So it almost helps you make other people your recruiter. And I know Madeline kind of alluded to that too, just it's it's main, maybe not for the individual you're talking to, but the, the people they're going to share the information with as well. So. Right. Right. And those, you know, there, there are, like when I hear you talk about that, I think about all of the the triggers that could that could push an automation. You know, you open the email, you share the content, you view the content, you go to the website, you click through. Um, these can all trigger, you know, cadences um, that, um, and these are, are core capabilities in that that we've had in the market for for a while. Um, yeah, so let's um, let's keep it moving just because we have a lot to get through and. Um, Madeline, you took uh, marketing. Trish, do you want to keep going and, and talk about branding a little bit? Sure. Yeah, this is actually, it's funny. Uh, it's one of my favorite parts of, of all of this when it comes to automation, because, you know, it, it feels like this would be where you would not maybe want to, to have it automated, right? You would want sort of that human touch. But what it does is it really enables your your recruiting team or your your other employees to have more time to do those personal touches because, everything that's sort of automated behind the scenes in terms of um, if an, a potential employee says they have interest in a certain area, right? And it's automatically feeding up that information to them. I sort of look at it a little bit like those old um, choose your own adventure books right? <laughs> um, in, a, in a weird way, right? So instead of them maybe making a direct ask for, oh, I'm you know turning to, to page 79 now instead of page 83, but it's, it's having a smart system that will do that for them, right? So again, to George's point of, you know, if they're clicking on a certain thing, it takes them to the next place that makes most logical sense for, for what they're needing at that particular time. Um, when it comes to employer branding, though, for me anyway, what, what that says is that it shows that that employer cares about what my personalized needs are. And that could change over time, whether I become an employee, whether I remain someone that's just in contact with them. But having that AI behind the scenes sort of um, figuring out what it is I need to know, what is timely for me to know, what is timely for me to share. Um, to me, it's such a huge benefit to actually then have your employees building the relationship in a more personal way. Yep. Anything to add, Madeline? No, I think I think that's great. And I think, you know, to me, employer branding is a part of recruitment marketing. So I think, you know, a lot of what you talk about with the triggers and the content, you know, lends itself to the branding as well um, to be able to, you know, push content forward, um, you know, be able to to provide candidates with the information that they need and, and do that um, in a way that's just triggering information. Right. I know right. it was probably five years ago that I had actually a an HR uh, leader in the space telling me that, you know, em employment branding was was dead, it didn't exist, it wasn't needed. And I found that to be really holistically untrue, right? Especially when you think about all of the reasons that people join an organization, it's so important to understand what that organization stands for in addition to what they, they make or the service they provide. It, it's really, I think, more important than ever to have that connection through the employer branding and have it be intentional not just accidental. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, I, I've heard you both talk about, uh, we've talked about personalization and that, that experience and, you know, the ability to really deliver the, the values, what the company stands for, um, you know, especially again, to bring the context back in this time. Um, it's, it's really important. I think, you know, p candidates, um, people are looking to really understand um, the, you know, who they're going to work with and for, um, and and not just you know meet the manager, but get a real feel for the organization and with a with a personalized experience that that draws them in into that. And with automation, you can do it at scale. Um, yeah. So let's uh, let's keep going. We're making good time. Um, sourcing. This is um, this is an area that um, is there's a lot of debate over you know, whether sourcing, you know, should be automated, 
you know, there's there are the uh, grand masters of sourcing who do magical things um, uh, with, you know, Boolean search strings and they use all sorts of tools that um, that are purpose built for recruiting and not. Uh, but on the other hand, there's a lot of data out there. And um, Madeline, how, what what do you when you think about automation and sourcing, what 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 are your thoughts? Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, the sourcers, I mean, sourcing is an art and there are sourcers out there. You know, some of them are on on this uh, event today I think to, sure. to and others um, and, the, and they're experts and it really is a skill. Um, and to me, the conversation we're having today is not a replacement to that. Um, right. It's more for those organizations that don't have those skills and don't have individuals on their talent acquisition teams that have that expertise in sourcing. And can we think about technology and can we think about automation as a way to help take some of those, you know, sourcing tricks and tactics and, and use that for their organization when they don't necessarily have those skills. So to me, it's, it's thinking about communication with candidates. It's thinking about identifying, you know, there's some, some examples here, identifying candidate status, thinking about um, engaging candidates and kind of segmenting talent in a different way, whether it's people that have left your organization, whether it's, you know, individuals you've reached out to in, in the past, it's thinking about how do we automate a lot of these sourcing activities that we might not have time to do, or we don't necessarily have the skills to do on our own. Um, I think the other piece, um, and I know this kind of overlaps with some of the other areas we're talking about, but um, also relates to uh, diversity and inclusion and reducing bias. How do we think about using automation to help de-bias some of the job descriptions or some of the ways that we communicate and engage with talent during the sourcing process. So, you know, to me, again, it's not necessarily a replacement to those individuals that are such experts in this area. It's it's for companies that either don't have those skill sets or don't necessarily have, have time to, to think about how to build out a really strategic sourcing function and automation can play a great role. Yeah, well, there's also automation for the sourcer, um, you know, the last panel um, uh, was talking about how there are fewer people um, doing these jobs, and so uh, you know, tools that are um, that are uh, building those lists, and you know, the helping the sourcer move into more engagement, more time on engagement of candidates, and less time um, in the uh, in the the active search capacity, if you will, efforts. But, um, you know, that, again, to your point, case by case, depending on the resources that they that, that they do have. And I think the other thing, too, is if you think about where companies are looking for the future, I mean, we're kind of in a certain area of uncertainty right now. And a lot of companies are thinking and preparing for what happens when they're dealing with either hiring again actively later this year or whether they're thinking about managing all of this you know, overload of applicants right now. And this is really where automation can help. And again, to your point, whether that's to your sourcing teams or to your recruiters, it can play a huge role because it can be incredibly overwhelming for right. those of you who've been through this. Yeah, the thing right now, I think, um, especially you mentioned the times that we're in uh, and just even before this, it, the word that stands out to me, to me the most on this particular slide is nurture. And, you know, as someone, I know we've all, you know, had various positions throughout human resources and recruiting in our lifetimes. And, you know, you don't necessarily think of something automated as being nurturing, but nurturing at scale is something that's really important. And it allows you to have those more intimate conversations and relationships with people that are your, your really, you know, super strong candidates for those jobs right now. Madeline, to your point, I think this is a great example of why you know, companies are not hiring necessarily in this time as much as they were before just because of the uncertainty, but they can use that automation to really help nurture those those relationships and keep them warm over the next six, eight, ten months um, until they know what they're going to do. Great. Let's uh, let's keep it moving. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, into uh, screening. So we've, we're, we're, you know, in the part of the flow where, you know, we've got candidates identified and uh, we're looking at um, uh, verification, background checking. Um, you know, I, I just wrote something this week about there was an investment in a AI based candidate verification um, tool. And, you know, the, the thing about verification is 
it's still not a you it can't be fully automated because so much of the data we're, we've made a lot of progress in the last 10 or 15 years but so much of the data that needs to be or the information i should say that needs to be uh validated isn't necessarily in a data form but it's getting there and some companies have gone through a process of, of creating those databases themselves but but triggering the workflow there's there's nothing um stopping an employer from uh, from triggering the workflow that begins this process, um, even the workflow that um, that helps create a uh, a profile and you can identify rules for adjudication and and uh, that helps the vendor uh, help you know understand uh, the process. What's really important is that um, it's a fair process and that. Uh, if to the extent that you're using automation, um, it's uh, this is an area where you want to be really careful um, because you can, you know, you don't want to introduce bias into this. There's a, um, you know, you, you need to be understanding that it's not a perfect process on the back end with that information. And uh, it's it's something that you don't want to put. You don't want to put this in a black box. I don't what what, what thoughts do, do you two have on this? For me, um, when I think of my days in recruiting, uh, leading a recruiting team, for example, this was the major pain point of all the things that we talk about today. If anyone's on the fence at all, like to me, this is where we wanted something that would actually automate um, this particular piece of the process. Reason being because of the inconsistencies. And, you know, George, you mentioned bias. That's that's just one thing. Um, there are so many different things that can come up in a background screen as anyone probably, you know, watching this session has personally been through. Um, you don't always know what decision to make. So definitely having rules and guidance on that built into your system so that you as the recruiter or as the HR professional um, doesn't have to necessarily think through all of those um, on a large scale all the time, right? You might only deal with the exceptions, for example. The other thing I was thinking of too is, you know, just throughout my career at different companies, it was often the more junior recruiter or junior sourcer who didn't have those years of experience um, under their belt just yet. And so I didn't have a way for them to get that consistency, to limit the bias, at least, you know, back when I was doing this. So now, to me, the value of this particular piece of it is that you have someone who might be very junior in their role. They're still learning how to make these assessments on different candidates. And having this automated will just really help protect protect them individually, protect you as a company, and protect the candidates too to make sure that it's all being as consistent as we can can make it. Yeah, there's a there's a great uh, automation that I've seen where um, you know uh, because the data is so to even call it data in some cases to say it's unstructured makes it sound like it's in a database. It's 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 a human calling or going to the courthouse um, and it's documents that are, that they're looking at and then providing, um, you know, then putting it into data form as far as, you know, what exists. And sometimes it's, it's not accurate. And so a great automation that I've seen is when the, uh, the background check uh, comes back in the case of background checks, giving the candidate an opportunity to comment on what's in the background check. If, if something is found, um, because I have, you know, I've seen errors in my career. I, I know somebody in our industry right now who went through a background check at a, at a very large global firm um, and somebody else with the same name, actually in a different area, they, there was a felony that came up in their background check. And it was um, as preposterous as that sounds, it's, it's not that unique. And most people watching this probably know that. So it's important that you can use automation to, to um, to streamline, you can also provide in, in this case provide a a good experience around your verification process. Madeline, anything that you would add before we move on? No, I think you both raise really good points around the candidate's perspective too. I mean, I think when we talk about automation, the mistake that we all easily get into is that we talk about it just from the employer's perspective or the recruiter's perspective, yeah. and there's so many benefits to the candidate for you know and through automation and for screening especially. It's you know, how, how often does it happen where kids doesn't even know that they need to, to go in and take a drug test? They don't know necessarily if they've completed the background screen because it's not automated, because they don't get those triggers, um, because it's not integrated with their ATS. So to think about it from the candidate's perspective, I think is really important. And 
you know, I think there's a communication piece along with that. George, I think that's a, an awesome example that you bring up. Um, I think even relevant today with COVID, and I've talked about this before, that a lot of the drug testing facilities are in the same building that COVID testing is happening. You know, hopefully this won't be for a forever situation, but for right now, how can we automate some of the communication that we're sending out to candidates in different regions based on geography that we know they have to take a drug test in the same facility? How are we gonna make them feel safe? How are we gonna automate and communicate with them uh, about this, this situation? That's a good point. Um, let's uh, let's keep it moving. I know we're uh, we're we're in good shape. Um, Trish, why don't why don't you uh, uh, lead us through selection? Thank you. So you know, I, I think that I I just said the last one was the most important to me, but then I looked at this, I'm like, oh, this is really important too. <laughs> um, I guess that's good, right? That that each of these each of these steps is really uh, there's some real. Re really good reasons to why you would want automation assistance here. Um, I think here, again, I probably rely back on that consistency uh, opinion a little bit because you want to make sure, we've, we've talked for years about trying to provide that best hire for, you know, that hiring manager, or that leader that really needs the right person with the right skills, right? So again, having an, um, an automated approach to the way that you are looking at all of that information that you do collect then during that you know, the, the screening phase um, and making sure that you're presenting that that best possible slate of candidates. Um, I mean, I think, again, you can't go wrong here. You know, obviously it's mentioning saving time. Um, you know, I think to Madeline's point too on the last one, it, around the candidate's experience with automation as well, this is the part where you close the loop, right? So um, I think everyone in here would probably agree they've all had candidates either you know, never get a reply or maybe never find out that the position was filled by someone else. So just going through the selection phase and making sure you're closing all those loops and that you as the recruiter or the, you know, head of HR, whoever you are, um, you're not the one who's personally having to have a tickler reminding you of all of those different steps that the system is doing that for you. It just makes the company look more professional and it makes the person on the receiving end, even if I kind of think all the way back to the beginning when we talk about the recruitment marketing piece. So if I'm not selected, it also kind of closes that loop for me in a really hopefully positive manner so that I still have really good feelings for that organization. And maybe I'm not the right fit for this role, but I'm put back in the pipeline and I circle back around that, you know, I still have a good feeling about any potential positions that come up. Right. Yeah. We talk a lot about assessments here in selection. And um, I mean, I, I've, I do a lot of work in that space, but Madeline, you've, uh, you just did some incredible research um, I know you've got a lot of insights around um, what people, what companies are doing and aren't doing around assessments and where the value is. What can you share some of that with everyone, please? Yeah. So it's to me, the, the broader topic of assessments is really interesting because companies are increasing their investment. They don't necessarily know if they're getting value from the providers they're investing in. And the market is still primarily dominated by really traditional assessment providers where there is an automation, um, they're not necessarily using even a, a strong technology platform. It's just based on a lot of data and a really expensive overpriced model. And what we're seeing now is a shift and there's a lot of really exciting solutions out there in the assessment space that um, are automating the assessment process, making sure that hiring managers get the data that they need on candidates so that hiring managers just aren't making decisions based on a resume or a, an application. And also from the candidate's perspective, can we make sure that we're automating the assessments so that they don't have to necessarily uh, feel like they're, you know, completely going from one workflow to another and, and leaving the whole process and that, that it's done in a way that feels really seamless and feels like a very consistent experience for them. And that's, that's what we're seeing with a lot of the, the new pro providers in the space. Um, to me, the, the interesting thing when you talk about assessments, and this is relevant for automation and, and it's relevant just for looking at assessment providers, is you have to balance the science and the validity of these providers with yeah. an experience, an experience for your hiring managers and your recruiters and an experience for your candidates. And that's a really tricky thing for assessments. It, it's really tricky to find a, a validated assessment that also you know, has has that positive experience. 
Yeah, I would say, um, uh, you know, uh, one note on that is um, I would uh, not use an assessment that does not deliver something back to the candidate to ask somebody spend, whether it's um, 90 seconds or 10 minutes or going through an assessment, no matter how pleasurable the experience was, and I say that tongue in cheek, um, uh, not delivering something back to them, some perspective, um, it, it, it's just not acceptable, I think, in today's market. And, and there are plenty of, uh, a lot of the science that's used in these assessments is open sourced or available and vendors are, are, are doing that. So um, we keep re referencing vendors and we're going to you know, give you a way to get at all the vendors that are in all of these categories uh, toward the end of this. But um, uh, let's let's keep keep moving on just from the sake of time um, and uh, get into because an interview is an area that we'll want to spend uh, a minute on. Um, Madeline, could you uh, could you talk us through uh, interview? Um, yeah, it's interesting. I mean, there's interview is so important, and I think we're we're seeing that shift with everything that's happening in the world right now from just recruitment marketing being the priority to now, okay, now that we've found um, people and we've engaged them and we've used automation, how do we make sure that we're continuing that through the process? And interviewing has been such an interesting area of talent acquisition for me over, over the past few months because automation plays such a, an important role, whether you're recruiting remotely, whether you are uncertain about what's gonna happen if you can fill these positions and start people, at the time that you want to start them. Interviewing is, and through automation, can schedule the interviews for you. It can help you communicate with hiring managers and candidates in a way that's more consistent. It can help with managing the whole, the whole process. And I know that interview management systems out there can do that. I know that there's you know, other technology, there's conversational AI that's, that's really coming up and helping organizations with the interview piece. Uh, but it's really important to think about automation for interviewing and, you know, and that's going to continue on whether, you know, or not we're out of this remote, remote world that we're in right now. Um, and the other piece that I'll say is, and I think it's confusing because a lot of companies now are saying, well, we're, we're using interviewing, we're going to do video interviews, we're using Zoom. That's not necessarily automation. You know, the, the value of the automation comes in being able to manage the interviews, schedule the interviews, deliver the interviews, track, and then track take that information, take that data and make sure that it's being through automation translated to hiring managers, to hiring teams, to recruiting teams so that we're making these decisions based on the valuable data that we're collecting. I like that you mentioned conversational AI too, because I know when I was working on a product team, um, for example, that's one of the things that we were thinking about the most when it came to the future um, with automation and interviewing. It was like, if you can imagine it's, it's able to, um, as an interviewer, might be asked a certain question, right? If you and I are having this conversation, I've got a tool that can then serve that up to me as the interviewer and answer right away instead of me saying, well, let me get back to you or let me go to HR or, you know, some other source for that information. So, again, I think we're going to see a lot of innovation here in this specific area in the next couple of years because, you um, some of those more obscure use cases are now able to be operationalized into a system and it's going to just really add that extra level of, um, I don't know, just comfort, even for, again, back to the candidate's perspective, wouldn't it be nice if the person you're talking with really kind of has all the answers, right? It's just being served right up. And so um, it just makes it a more complete interview too than, than one that's a little bit fragmented, I think. Yeah. And, you know, we're, we're, we're talking at a high level because one size really doesn't fit all um, for in a, in a high volume recruiting environment, you know, at, at this moment, potentially, you know, looking at, um, you know, uh, some of the more essential, you know, delivery or uh, grocery type, you know, places where they're doing a lot of hiring, you can get um, through the entire um, process um, in a, with complete automation with um, conversational AI, um, if there is a, an actual person-to-person -person interview um, using a digital interview platform. Um, but I, I've seen incredible uh, results where the, um, the chat interfaces, conversational AI, you know, cross-platform messaging interfaces, when that's called an interview, when that's branded an interview, um, uh, that the 
the reception on the candidates side goes up and their perspective on that experience um, is better uh, than when they go into it thinking about it as um, engaging, you know, in engagement on a site or getting a, getting some questions answered. Uh, you can, you know, begin the, the interview process, the screening process in any of these, uh, with any of these technologies. Um, let's, I can't see the wonderful Dave Meekleberg's chat thing while I'm presenting this. So if about five minutes. So we'll okay, very moving. good. <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, I'll let's let's be quick on offer because, and then we'll combine a couple of sections as we get into the results. Um, and this entire deck is available uh, for everyone, so you can get out all of the uh, the deep the insights that we provide you here. Um, but you know, given uh, thinking about the process and the triggers and automation that we've talked about, um, there's a real opportunity to um, not only automate the process of creating an offer and delivering an offer and receiving back um, a, a completed offer, but also to, um, uh, to get into fairness and, um, and equity when it comes to salary and compensation. And uh, this is a place where given the way, uh, the, the, the access we have to data, the access that we have to uh, both public data and the data within our enterprise, um, there are some incredible things that can be done here. I don't know if you either have anything else to add around those issues or some other insights. I'd say one, one sentence because compensation was one of my favorite things to work on um, in my career. I, I've, been, I've been working with companies before where it was completely made up. <laughs> so back to the equity portion, um, I think it does help you bring in actual data from the industry and make it fair. Um, the other thing, too, is we always look for ways that HR leaders, recruiting leaders can be more strategic. To me, this is a very great way. If you have this automated compensation models, you can make very strategic decisions about do we want to pay above market for this specific position in this specific region, for example, or this city or this town? Um, you can be very um, precise, I would say, when you have it automated. If you don't, you're just guessing. And then that doesn't always lead to the best results. So again, if it happens one time, that might be okay. But if you're inconsistent about the type of results you provide because you don't have this particular piece automated, I think you put your company at risk and you're leaving a lot of money on the table um, that could be more wisely spent. So. Yep. Okay. Um, I'm going to move on and ask Madeline to cover, we're going to combine pre-boarding and onboarding. If you could kind of speak to both since it's sort of a, Yep. flow, if you will. Yeah. And, you know, it's interesting to me, onboarding needs automation because there's three components to it. There's the forms, there's the tasks, and then there's the socialization into the company culture. So if you think about the forms, how do we automate the forms so that, you know, candidates aren't waiting till or new hires aren't waiting till they come in the first day and they're filling out all the forms, sitting at their desk, waiting for people to come by. This can all be done in an automated way, auto, automated way, even before they come in on their first day. If, and that's going to be based on the preference of your organization. Um, the, the other piece is task management. How do we automate the tasks? So if a candidate, a new hire, doesn't have a computer on the first day, you're alerting IT, you're alerting their manager, you're alerting whoever's on their team to let them know that this new hire is coming in and there's no computer, there's no parking pass, there's no uh, you know, infrastructure to support them. So the tasks and the automation around the tasks is really, really important, especially if you have a, a, a lot of new hires starting at the same time. And then the last piece is the socialization. How do we automate the communication with our new hires about the company culture, about things that they might be interested in, about book clubs, about uh, running clubs, about dry cleaners around the corner? How do we do this You know, where we're not just waiting for our managers to see when they have a lunch break to communicate this, we're doing it in an automated, automated, consistent way. Um, and the value is huge. You know, the the value to the candidates huge, the value to the hiring manager is huge as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, the, you know, the value of all of this, um, th th some of it's on the front end in the process, some of it's um, post hire with um, with retention and time to productivity. Um, but there's a, a huge impact um, and that nobody would be at this um, on the, uh, sitting through this conference if they didn't, they weren't exploring this. And this also isn't one size fits all. Um, but let's let's move into the poll results since we're we're. Yeah, we're in the final minute. So maybe share yeah. some of the high level. results. OK, 
All right. Um, so um, we we asked four questions. What you're automating today? How will your investment change? What do you perceive as the top benefit? And uh, what would you in, in today's environment specifically? Um, we at, at the time we did this, we were thinking COVID-19. What would you automate today? And um, I don't think there are any surprises on what people are automating today. Madeline, Trish, did you, your communication was the top and close behind was engagement on the website. Um, anything jump out at you here? No, it's probably what I would expect, but I would just say that when looking at these results, I would I would hope people would take the, the ones, maybe the bottom four, and think about how you could apply automation to those more strategically. Because just because everyone isn't doing it right now, um, that might be the problem in and of itself, right? If we're all focused on doing everything the same way, we will still struggle with doing, you know, the same results that we've been getting. So yeah, I would I would say for me personally, I would sort of flip that and uh, and look at making some adjustments there. Yeah, yeah. Um, Madeline, when when you I know you've done a lot of you know this was a quick poll with uh, folks that are attending the conference. Uh, you've done a lot of research around this. Um, mm -hmm. How does this map to what you've done? Um, you know, 44%, 43.9% increasing their uh, their budgets and automation in the in the next year. Yeah, we definitely see an increase too. We see it even higher, you know, closer to 70% of companies increasing. And I think, um, you know, the, the challenge I see is that companies aren't thinking about it end to end. You know, we're really talking about end to end talent acquisition. They're just looking at one or two areas. Um, it doesn't mean you need to do it all at the same time, but talk to your providers, push your providers in this area, see what options you already have. Um, and you might be surprised that you don't necessarily need to spend more money. Yep. Yep. Um, now, uh, the top benefit, um, I was uh, not surprised, but a little disappointed. It was process efficiency, which I guess drives ROI. Um, but the, um, you know, candidate experience, I just think if anything jumped out at me through the whole thing, there's an incredible opportunity um, for both the hiring team experience and the candidate experience to improve with automation. I think people lose sight of that because they just think about efficiency. What were what were your thoughts on, on this? Well, I know we're out of time, but I would just say, again, I'd flip the model, right? Everyone is focusing on doing it because of one reason. Everyone's focused on doing it one way. Flip that model. And, and if you've got money to spend, I would dive into those areas that people are really not investing in because, again, that's going to be your true differentiator. Okay. So... Um, if they could inter if they could automate one thing, uh, some of that bottom four Trish came up. Interview scheduling, candidate screening were sort of tied on the top, so that's that's good news. Um, but because we're out of time, um, I just want to tell everyone you can you can get uh, this deck at uh, hrtechbook.com uh, slash rac, um, and you can uh, while you're at HR Techbook. You can view the entire HR tech landscape, but we have all the vendors indexed um, across all of these categories. At the same time, uh, you know, we'll be at the booth after this session and at activatehcm.com, we do have an interview management uh, market landscape, you know, logo graph, as well as the activate uh, conversational AI and recruiting uh, discussion coming up on July 23rd. So, uh, you know, please, you know, it's a free report, download it, take a look at the, the directory is free. Everything's easy access, um, hrtechbook.com slash RAC. Um, this was fun. It was fast paced. Trish, Madeline, thanks for, for, uh, for doing this with me. Thank you. Thank you. Is the wonderful Dave uh, Mikkelberg. I am here. Guys, thank you so much. That was wonderful. Um, so just a couple kind of programming uh, announcements. Um, so as George mentioned, um, you can go find George, Trish, and Madeline at their, Madeline at their uh, booth in the expo. The HR Federation should be right there at the top um, when you go there. So they'll be live right after this. Um, that is a good shout out. So at 3 p.m., the expo will formally open. Um, if you've stopped by the expo up to this point, you've probably seen some nice placeholder videos, learned about some of the companies. Um, at 3 p.m., you will be able to... Um, uh, 
actually interact with salespeople, talk to some of the people that are doing this work um, on uh, around HR tech. Um, so we encourage you to go to the booths, share your audio and video, actually start a conversation. Um, they're open for everybody, which is super duper cool. Um, additionally, one final plug. Um, one of the joys of getting to, to MC is I can give myself a little uh, nudge. Um, I will actually be speaking if you want to learn more about Wade and Wendy. Um, George, Trish, and Madeline spoke about conversational AI and capabilities around that. Um, that happens to be our wheelhouse. So if you want to hear me speak about conversational AI um, and Wade and Wendy, uh, I will be on the session stage at 3 p.m. Uh, with Chris Sayers from Comcast. Um, sit tight. Uh, the next uh, conversation here will be happening in about five minutes, um, talking about the business case for recruitment automation, um, dollars and cents. It's a, a play on words um, with my colleague, the other Dave at Wade and Wendy, Dave Foley. Um, so you will see us, uh, you'll see them in just a few minutes and we will see you soon. So don't forget to go to the expo hall. Don't forget to check out Wade and Wendy. Don't forget to listen to the next talk. Um, so much going on and we will talk to you soon. Thanks everyone.